Welcome to curl 8.1.0. This is May 17th, 2023. So I um, am happy to announce that I did a release today. So I am Daniel Stenberg. I'm the lead developer of curl. Of course, I work for Wolf SSL. This is my website. I'm going to do my presentation today in the standard curl presentation. First, some numbers about the release uh, and some of the security vulnerabilities and announcements that we've done today uh, that are fixed, included, shipped with this release. Some of the changes, there are three changes to highlight. A bunch of bug fixes that I think are the possibly the most noteworthy ones or interesting or fun or something, and something about what we will remove in the future, and something that about what we might do next uh, in the project. So this is release 217. It's a little bit fascinating, but yes, this <laughs> we've done this, done this a few times by now. And in this particular release, we have participations from 64 different contributors, all named and thanked in the release notes. 35 of these are new, so we're bumping up the numbers pretty fast, reaching, well, 2875 in total right now. 34 of these were actually authors who actually have their names done as commit authors in the repository. 17 new, 1142 authors so far. That's pretty awesome. And we are at, um, yeah, this one, this particular release cycle was 58 days in comparison to the 56 that we tend to try to keep. Uh, the regular eight weeks cycle, but you know, you, you might remember that the previous release, the bumped the version number to version eight, and that was done on our 25 years birthday anniversary. So that was actually done on Monday instead of a Wednesday. So that's why we have these uh, two extra days. So 58 days ago, we celebrated 25 years. And now we are at 9,189 days uh, of age since the first curl release. We have a few security advisories this time. And as usual, I want to emphasize that for security advisories or for anything curl security related, this is the website to go to, right? To on the curl website in this docs slash security.html, you will find all the details and all the information about curl security flaws. And I usually say this, but I want to emphasize it even more because you will notice if you go and look at these flaws and, and you then compare them to how others report them, you will see some uh, differences. They're, they are not always reported the same way. And in particular, some sources tend to change the severity levels and they invent or set new CVSS scores for our issues because they think they can do it better than us, but that makes them differ from our our ratings or our severity levels, which I think is a horrible way to approach security vulnerabilities in general, but this is the reality, right? So I'm just telling you so that I think we do a better job than others when it comes to our security related problems. So we got this issue reported. It's a use after free in SSH. And this is really in libssh2 related builds, only if you build curl with libssh2 and you use this SHA-256 fingerprint checking, uh, which you can do, of course, and if you use that and, it, and the check uh, fails, it'll actually output the failed, or rather the, the um, fingerprint that it used to check in the error message, but it actually outputs it after it has freed it. So it's it's a use after free and it might actually then insert data from memory that is not curls anymore. So there's actually a tiny minuscule risk that it actually leaks some sensitive information through the error message. Uh, that's why we consider it to be a medium security related issue. It's still very hard to exploit or was suffer from because the timing from the free to the actual use of the data is like, you know, three lines of code. So it's going to be within nanoseconds on a modern computer. So it's really hard for this or unlikely to actually damage someone t 
terribly, but still, it might happen. So it's a security problem uh, reported by Wei Chong Tan. I probably mispronounced his name, her name, uh, they, their name. Uh, but the reward is uh, as a, for a medium severity level, 2,400 USD for this. So thank you. That's the first one. So we had four security vulnerabilities in this release. They um, have mostly been around for a long time. This particular bug uh, is a SIG log jump race condition. It has existed in curl code for, I think, for over 7,000 days. Uh, so, <coughs> so when you build curl, you uh, to do name name resolving, basically how to resolve host names, you can select from several different backend solutions. You, you can either use the good old style uh, synchronous name resolving, or you can do threaded name resolving, or you can use CARES. So the oldest possible version to use is the synchronous name resolving. It uses the uh, get adder info or get host by name in the same thread with no threading. So it's, it's blocking for curl. This is an unusual way to use name resolving in curl because it's usually you don't want that because it blocks everything else in curl while a name resolving is being done. And a name resolve can be slow. It can take seconds, right? Or actually several seconds, many seconds that sometimes. But anyway, uh, one of the ways that, so if you use a synchronous name resolving, we have this lame way to actually provide a timeout which is using alarm and sig long jump. And so, so if you do that in multiple threads, uh, there was a risk that a global buffer would be uh, used from both threads and there would be a race condition and badness could happen. I, this is rare. I mean, th that you're using this particular name resolving is rare, but that you would do it in a threaded con uh, situation would also be even rarer because it uses signals and threads and signals they are usually a very bad mix so this is an unlikely thing to actually hurt anyone bad we set it to severity low because of this <coughs> found and reported by harry sintonen <coughs> the third one <coughs> is a is a complicated one uh, reported by hiroki kurosawa this is an idn wildcard match problem and this has existed for a very long time. I think I think this might be upwards eight thousand days or something. But so so when you provide a um, like this, the internal wildcard matching function in curl supports wildcard matching, of course. But it also supports how should I explain this? So you can, for example, say uh, x asterisk dot domain dot com and not only the asterisk in the beginning right so then then would then would uh, check that the first hostname actually starts with an x and then anything and then that particular domain uh, this turns out to be a rather fatal flaw because if you're using an idn name they're all starting with xn dash dash right so for any idn hostname they always start with an x actually when converted to Punicode, and the match, uh, wildcard matching is done on Punicode, that is after the IDN conversion. So this means that if you're using one of these IDN names and you would have a certificate wildcard on uh, <laughs> X asterisk, it would match an IDN name that really had nothing with X in it, uh, or it certainly didn't start with an X. And this was all terrible, bad. It's mitigated pretty heavily by um, public certificate or authorities. Uh, anyone who's providing certificates for the internet, they, they don't allow this kind of wildcards in, wild <laughs> in certificates. So you cannot suffer from this problem uh, on the public internet because these certificates don't exist. But you could still use it in, in internally or in your own CA or whatever. So we still it's still a vulnerability. And going forward, curl will not support this kind of partial wildcards. It will only support the asterisk and a dot in, in the beginning of a wildcard um, in the certificates. So no, no sort of partial wildcards. <coughs> because of this um, 
the fact that internet uh, certificates really are no don't, don't use anything else and the the browsers both uh, chrome and firefox actually don't support any other kind of wildcards either so we we're getting in line with with the browsers here um severely low because of how unlikely it is that you actually get sort of that you suffer from this oh i, I should mention then of course that hiroki kurosawa reported that and he, he I think it's uh, he, I don't know. Uh, so Hiroki also reported this more post after put confusion, which is almost identical to a previous security problem we had before, which is when you're writing a, a libcurl program that makes a post and then use, reusing the same handle makes a put by updating a few fields according to documentation. But due to silliness, internal stupidity, it really, uh, when sort of accidentally not updating all the fields or in a special, special combination, the, the application would use data in a surprising way. So there's actually a tiny risk that such a uh, sequence would send the wrong data to the server and thereby leaking something uh, unintentionally. Low risk because it's most much more likely to just crash or you, that you just detect this in testing or whatever. So I, it's a very low, low, um, th there are high odds, low uh, likeliness that you would actually suffer from this in a, in a real world. Still, severity low reported by Hiroki Kurosawa, also 480 USD reward. And as you can see, we have these CV numbers if you, if you want to go and look up the details. And again, look at uh, on the curl website. We have all the details, and you can find exactly which commit that introduced the problem, that fixed the problem, and all the details. And if you have any questions, get, just get in touch, and we'll make sure uh, that we update it. Uh, we we'll update uh, all the all the information if there's anything that is questionable. So I just want to mention that starting this version or at this time, we also provide all the vulnerability information on the curl website as JSON. So that means that whatever you want, uh, you want to figure out you, uh, from the vulnerabilities, you can get uh, the, you can get all the vulnerabilities as, as a single array, a JSON array, with all the objects being the different uh, past vulnerabilities to curl. You can also figure out all the part particular vulnerabilities for a specific release as a JSON array, or you can get each specific individual CVE as a single JSON object. So everything this is possible to extract automatically. So basically what we're doing here is providing a lot of more easier, easily accessed metadata about s vulnerabilities that we have uh, fixed in curl before. So by providing this, I hope that sort of we could help the ecosystem and anyone writing tooling or automated stuff around this to get it from us automatically. And um, this is using di this so-called open source vulnerability JSON format uh, schema. So it's meant to interrupt with a lot of different other back uh, sort of databases and, and tooling, <coughs> hopefully helping to provide data and serve the community and everything all this is of course uh, available on this same url that i mentioned before already curl.se slash docs slash security.html so you can find the links to the to all vulnerabilities to and for particular releases and for particular cves and stuff like that i'm sure that we will go forward and polish this json format a little bit more going forward but and, and i'm very keen on hearing from you how you think it works and what you need to make it even better <coughs> so this is curl.8.1.0 .8 curl and uh, we have done a few things in this that actually is new of course that's why we bump the <laughs> the least important number right that's we have a zero in the on the end on the end and in particular this time the the main major the biggest change is the http2 over proxy support so now if you're using an https proxy uh, with curl you can now ask curl to negotiate http2 with that proxy and then communicate with http2 when communicating through this proxy um, 
this of course allows you for example if you would get regular HTTP over this HTTP2 proxy you could reuse the connection and do multiplexing better and yeah it just open up uh, opens up a new uh, sea of opportunities to speak more protocol combinations <laughs> we also introduced the uh, refusal of to resolve the dot onion top level domain which is, is um, mandated by an RFC since a long time and now we finally took the step to do it so if you want to use dot onion if you want to use tour you specify a the necessary SOX proxy and curl will use that SOX proxy properly and send the host name to that proxy but not resolve it by itself so this by doing this refusal we just help the world to avoid uh, accidentally leaking uh, dot onion names to the resolver and we also added a bunch of new variables to the curl command line dot w or write out option that allows you to output parts of the urls really the url and the effective url i could mention that when we worked on this this triggered a separate project called trural so we have a new tool in the curl family called trural you should look it up uh, it's a new thing for parsing and manipulating urls and url components but that's separate from curl but you can sure use it in combination with curl uh, particularly done for shell scripting and and tooling around curl and curl components curl oh, sorry url parsing url components url updating fiddling like that <coughs> we managed to land and quite an astounding number of 185 bug fixes in this release so 58 days and 185 bug fixes so a pretty high rate of fixing and of course i i will not go through all of them there's just too many and many of them are just minor and sort of not terribly exciting or interesting but i scrapped uh, uh, sorry I've, I've sort of yeah collected the the ones that i think are worthy of discussing and I'm putting a little extra highlight on and putting the finger on to, to tell you about. We improved the check source script in several ways in this release. We, um, for example, I've, uh, we made it detect a few more indentation problems. Uh, we made it detect a few uh, space problems before or space issues before parentheses and, and stuff like that so it's basically just we we improved it a little bit to f to f detect and warn about more code style violations and check source is a little tool that we use in the build of curl to just verify that the source code adheres to the code style it, it only warns uh, about violations so you get a chance to fix it and we run that in the CIs and everything so to make sure that the code we write and the code we merge is following the code style we also fixed a lot of minor things uh, well, not all just minor but we uh, polished the CMake build as we tend to do of course but I think this time we did it a little bit extra so it works better now we've fixed several uh, compile errors really in the GS kit backend so now GS kit should work better again especially than on OS 400 IBM I I think it's called these days <coughs> there has been and if you watch the uh, git log git commit history you will see that there has been a lot of modifications and updates in the run tests and the test directory in general because there's a huge preparation for parallel tests uh, coming well the, the preparations have already been done mostly but it, there's all there's a long transition here and a lot of work being being done mostly by Dan Fandrich to make sure that we can soon do testing in parallel hopefully by the time of the next release we might have some news about that we also fixed some silly thing that we have a particular highlighting of URLs in location headers when they when you output them in the terminal and if you have one of these early VTE terminals that highlighting didn't work so now we actually switch off that in curl output so that's one out of four so let's continue here in in libcurl we uh, we support transfer encoding automatic decompression and 
and you think yeah i, I know about that but I'm, i just want to emphasize that this is transfer encoding as compared to content encoding transfer encoding compression is basically never used it's a rare thing it was it, it is the thing that everyone wanted to do to compress transfers automatically but the world transitions we only use content encoding for this these days so when you do automatic compression these days you mostly always do content and compression not transfer encoding so, so the, sorry content encoding and not transfer encoding anyway so curl would previously do automatic detecting of transfer encoded the compression and automatically automatically decompress it without the user asking for it but we no longer do that so now you actually have to ask for it to make it happen basically to avoid the, i mean to let the, the the curl user be in control of this to so not do any have any surprises in particular if the server would then you know try to do a lot of silly extra compressions just to to trick the curl uh, client to do silly stuff like those um, previous vulnerabilities we've had so this should reduce the risk of that uh, in the future pretty much um, if you're asking for trans if you want transfer encoding uh, compression you already should ask for it because there's some extra headers in in the request and so on um, so this should be completely harmless for for existing users we, we did we did this internal optimization and we have a internal system called dinbuff for internal dynamic buffers it's just an internal thing but uh, in in the way when we grow this internal buffer we have a maximum size set every buffer we use internally have a maximum size so it cannot be used larger than that but when we grow these buffers they could actually grow beyond that too big buffer limit and just that would then just waste that data because it couldn't be used but we could still grow to that size which was just silly and this is just tiny and not always just tiny but it's an optimization to just not waste more memory than necessary and in a similar vein i introduced a maximum dns cache size independent of timeout value and let me uh, elaborate here so curl has a dns cache internally basically to save you from having to do many <coughs> uh, <coughs> consecutive dns uh, lookups so if you for example you write an, an application and you want to connect to a particular host name and that connection gets closed and you connect to it again so you just resolve them you want to look up to the host name again and again and again and again uh, curl has a dns cache so that you don't have to do, redo the resolving within that timeout period the timeout being 60 seconds by default but if you would look up a lot of different host names um, you could if you would look up a thousand host names per second you would have 60,000 host names in the dns cache after one minute right uh, <clears throat> because we only have a timeout value a maximum timeout we don't have a, a maximum size in the cache so it could then pretty much explode in size without that really being the intention from the application side and especially if you would increase the timeout value perhaps you could easily blow that up considerably and that would then possibly not only take a lot of memory but it could also make it slow in the end and now there's a maximum dns cache size which actually is it actually is set specifically fixed to 30,000 entries so it cannot grow bigger than that but that should be just you know uh, worst case maximum it, 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 no no sensible application should ever reach that limit but if you do it'll kill off the oldest ones so to keep the maximum amount below that threshold i also introduced this ignore logic for 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 signals into the multi socket multi socket action function which basically is a minor performance uh, enhancement for doing uh, event based applications using the curl, uh, libcurl api just allows you to do things faster and, and another performance enhancement is, is that 
when you do many transfers using the libcurl multi api so you add you could do them you know hundreds or thousands of parallel connections or transfers uh, non blocking using this api we, we've introduced this new mechanism where we remove the already uh, completed transfers or the one waiting to start from the main link list basically this makes the process much faster when we iterate through all the uh, current transfers for example so we can just remove those that we don't have to care about making things faster when we uh, for the few times when we actually iterate through them all in particular this will make a difference if you do thousands of them uh, and it takes a while until you take care of the ones that are completed and or in, in the cases where you add a, a large amounts and you don't uh, allow them to sit in the queue for example you could limit the number of connections to particular host names or a part like that so that they would be queued up before they actually start so um, we brought back support for sftp path ending with uh, slash tilde and this is something we supported in the past it was a little uh, it was never really intended because if you want to do a directory listing with curl you're supposed to uh, end the url with a slash that's how you tell curl to do a directory listing instead of getting a file so that was always the intention but for unintentionally we supported this as well so if you had a sftp url that ended with slash tilde it would also do a directory listing until the last release when I modified that so it, it wouldn't do it anymore so uh, then we broke a few use cases so now we <laughs> reintroduced this exception to the rule in in the libssh2 you could get a crash if you use the keyboard callback uh, with libssh you could make lib, uh, libcurl stuck too long within an sftp transfer sort of block all the other transfers because the libssh backend didn't uh, ask it to be completely non-blocking so basically an existing SS sftp transfer could block out the other transfers going on at the same time we modify the socket pair we have a socket pair emulation function basically creating a socket pair function for those platforms that don't have uh, their own native implementation of socket pair and we had a pretty lame approach to so when we set up the, the socket pair we actually verify that the that the that curl owns both ends of the socket so because it sets up an actual socket and a listener and a sender so curl then verifies that it, whatever it sends it can actually also receive before it considers the socket pair creation fine and this verification part is now done much better and it actually uses a proper random value to do this to and make sure generate the random value send it over the pipe verify that we can get the ra same random in the other end then it's our pipe and nobody is interfering um, to, to that damages the data at least we also enhance the web uh, encoding decoding functions again so it's been slightly rewritten and provided and uh, of course you know that websocket is still experimental so you have to enable it in the build to get it going <coughs> and my my fourth little screen here are things bug fixes only in the url api as i mentioned previously uh, we introduced this new tool called trural which is for url manipulation parsing extracting and editing uh, and when doing that uh, i have exercised the url api a little bit more more as a user and that showed some weaknesses at some point but apart from that with i did a, a number of cleanups and performance improvements in the parser and especially i noticed a few places where we kind of parsed a little more than we had to so i could by just being more clever could avoid doing things more times than i have to or going through data more uh, longer than we had to so basically just avoiding doing things in vain that we didn't have to so cleaning it up making it a tad bit faster i think it's still fast uh, fast enough i uh, also made it much sure that when when we use a ip4 address in an i in an in a url the parser will now detect and error out on illegal ipv4 addresses previously it would just 
it would try to parse it and normalize it if it was a detected it to be a valid and fine IPv6 address. But now, and, and if it wasn't a fine IPv6 address, it would just bail out and, and consider it to be a, a something else and, and pass it on uh, as it might be right anyway, uh, and leave that to the name resolver later. But, and that, that would then fail later if you would use it for a transfer. But now we actually verify. So if it detects that this is this cannot be anything else but an IPv4 address, right? If it starts with a decibel number and a dot and whatever it is, then it also verifies that it is a correct and legally provided IPv4 address. And otherwise it will fail the URL parsing. Basically, it makes the URL parser detect bad IPv6 addresses. For example, if you use a number larger than 255 or if you use, you know, five numbers instead of four or s things like that. Uh, it also now prevent the, the API now prevents you from setting an invalid scheme. Previously, it would it was very liberal. You can pretty much set any string there, but that just made it really awkward because then you could set a string containing, for example, colon slash slash, and if the scheme contains colon slash slash, then when extracting a URL from that, you would get a <laughs> double URL sl uh, colon slash slash or whatever. It it turned out to be really ugly. So now we prevent uh, Ill invalid schemes from being settable in the API. It'll just return an error for, for you. Um, and also when asked, <laughs> we, ha we have a lot of, we have a bunch of flags when you're using the URL API. And one of them is please URL encode what I'm sending you. And in particular, this is used for URL encoding plain spaces into percent 20 in, in most cases. And this didn't work for the fragment part of URLs. Now it does. That was just an omission. Probably nobody ever tried it before I tried it. And uh, we sort of had missed to have a use, uh, test case for it. Now it's fixed. Now it works. So thank you. That was uh, the, a few of the bug fixes. <laughs> there are more. You go to the change log and you can sort of drown in, in the list and 185 of them. So we're going to remove a few things in from curl going forward. We are going to, in August, which is not too far away, right? Just just three months off. We're going to remove support for NSS. I've added a question mark for GSKit because I'm sensing that people really don't want us to remove GSKit. So I'm going to bring up that as a discussion point again, I think, uh, because I, I'm seeing movement and, and people are polishing. And as I mentioned, we fixed GSKit errors in this particular release, so there is people wanting it and, and fixing it. So maybe, maybe we should postpone the removal of GSKit. We'll see. We're certainly going to remove support for building with legacy Ming W in September. That's going to happen because it's virtually nobody is using this anymore. It's just being a pain to, to maintain for no particular good reason. And next year, we're going to remove support for space rep uh, separated patterns in the no proxy variable still far off and going forward the next release we are looking at i'm pretty sure this is going to be called uh, 8.2.0 because we have new things we want to add and as you can see on this little list some of the things that we are considering for the next release is we'll see about ipfs support is i've mentioned this for a long time already i I detect a um, slowdown of, uh, I mean, in the attention for this pending PR. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure this is going to happen next. I'm not sure it's going to happen at all. It seems we'll see. Uh, it depends on what people want and who's and what, what kind of attention we get on the pull request. So there's also a p pending pull request for doing directory listings for file colon slash slash URLs, hopefully coming. I'm pretty sure this is coming with, because this is in a PR that I have made, which is adding two new command line options for curl builds, curl command line tools on Windows built to use OpenSSL. Because if you're using these options, they can then use the native CI, CI bundle, CI store, CA store in Windows. So by using these options, you can ask curl to rather use this Windows CA store instead of the CA store on file that OpenSSL builds otherwise uses, builds use. So it's just a way to 
make it slightly more convenient for users on Windows because I think this is what a lot of users on Windows want even when they use curl built with uh, OpenSSL. As I mentioned briefly we're probably going to see parallel tests land uh, before the next release so parallel test means that instead of running test after test in a serial fashion fashion one by one by one by one uh, the test suite will fire up a bunch of worker processes and it will run a lot of different parallels at the same time in a parallel fashion. The intent and hope and, and wish is of course that by doing this on a typical modern machine we will complete all the tests much faster than we do now. Uh, hopefully it'll all <coughs> it will also be possible to run CI tests a little bit faster but they will be more limited because they will have fewer cores and, and threads available that most developers will have on their local machines. We also have a, a pending PR for setting the HA proxy client IP. So HA proxy is a very basic protocol that passes on the, uh, the client IP to the other end basically to typically a proxy or something uh, and this um, option then just makes it possible for curl or libcurl actually to just set that client IP well instead of you know extracting it or providing it automatically from the one you're actually using so this allows you to pass on a different IP address maybe you got it from somewhere else you just want to pass it on so those are some of the things that seems to be in, in, in in the pipe for for the future and we are going to release 8.2.0 then if things go according to plan on July 19 and uh, everything that is going to end up in this release will be available on this URL as always because it's populated automatically so it'll end up there as we work through the release cycle and I want to uh, just emphasize that the release cycle as always it works like this so we have an eight week release cycle right so this is today this is release wednesday and we after this release day uh, this release day the release wednesday we will have a 10 days cool down period which which means that during this time we will not merge any new features or major changes the cool down period is meant to be a time where we we address bugs and we uh, will merge do bug fixes or whatever but and and we will use this so in case of need we will do a follow-up patch release so i if if something really terrible has occurred we will get told about it within the next few days and we will get a, a release out soon but maybe we don't have to adjust the release cycle in other ways so if if nothing bad happens we will on this saturday then 10 days from now we will switch into feature window which is a 21 days period three full weeks where we actually allow merging of features changes that um, change stuff right or add stuff and if we do we will bump the release number to 8.2.0 right because if we don't merge any features or changes we will just bump the minor number instead chances are that we will merge features because we tend to do and after three weeks that's another saturday right from saturday to saturday and then we switch into the feature freeze mo uh, window and that is 25 days when we don't merge any features we just merge bug fixes to be prepared for the next release wednesday right so that's the ongoing cycle it never ends it goes like this on and on and on and on forever um, and in this particular cycle of course may 17 is today so that's up there uh, when we did the, the release today as I record this video and Saturday in 10 days that's May 27 and Saturday three weeks after that is June 17th and then we have a release Wednesday again in eight weeks on July 19th so that's the plan that's the cycle for this round right but this cycle here that's that's the one that is just going to keep on moving for ideally or hopefully or who knows forever or for the foreseeable future at least so that's um, that's it so if you work with curl if you have curl in your products in your services or in your tools and you need support you, you know where to contact me i work with curl support all days and this is the
primary way that we f fund my my food on the table actually so um commercial support every day for curl if you find or suspect any curl issues bugs typos anything that doesn't work the way you think it should submit a bug report on, on github um, in the issue tracker if you suspect any security problems or know any security problems submit that on hackerone.com slash curl instead and if we confirm that it is a, a, a security problem we will give you a monetary reward uh, in uh, association with the IBB Internet Bug Bounty actually they are the our sponsors they pay the bounty part and I would say that out of the security reports we get we get a lot of security reports about I think around five percent of the reports we get are actually confirmed and, and uh, validated as security problems so there's no shame or or badness in reporting things that turn out to be not security related problems uh, that's fine we will just after validating confirming discussing we will bring them up as regular issues or pull requests if we consider them not security problems it's not a big deal it's better to be s sure and better to be safe than not so bring them on i want to highlight the the good set of good sponsors that we have in may 2023 I'm employed by Wolf SSL. Hacks is the original founder of Curl. Fastly serves a lot of infrastructure to us. Team Viewer pays CIs. Kira runs DNS for us. Corellium, Corellium has paid uh, WebSocket developments. Elastic is our gold sponsors and sponsor. And then we have a bunch of these smaller companies, silver sponsors, helping out, sponsoring uh, us to make it possible for us to, to keep the project running. Thank you. So this is curl dot curl eight dot one dot zero on May seventeenth, twenty twenty three. Um go get it, use it, um have fun and I will see you again hopefully in about uh, eight weeks. Bye.